Parshas, Titzaveh, Tavshinayin Dalid. Baruch Hashem, due to a family simcha tonight, uh, we are doing the shir from a remote location, and uh, we will not be at our regular place tonight, but uh, Baruch Hashem, it's for good reasons, and Mir Hashem, for simchas, we're ready to go anywhere. The Medrash Rabbah, on this week's parsha, brings a pasuk from Yirmiya, Perak Yud Aleph. And this Medrash is discussing the opening part of the parsha, where we're discussing making the olive oil for the menorah, and the pasuk says as following, Zayis Ranon Yefei Pri Soyar Kora Hashem Shemecha. That uh, actually probably Shemech, the Pasuk is Shemech, Kor Hashem Shemech, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu refers to the Yidin as Kalal Yisrael in an affectionate way and calling them, referring to them as a Zayas, as an olive. And the Medrash says, although we find that Kalal Yisrael is Nimshal in other places, to other fruits. We find Klai Yisrael being nimshal to a Geffen. We find Klai Yisrael being nimshal to a Te'ena. But there is something unique, says the Medrash, about an olive. And what is it about the olive that is unique? The olive goes through many different stages. When we are looking to bring the olive to another level, the olive goes through many stages. It goes through a stage of pounding the olive, of crushing the olive, of grinding the olive, all things like that. And only then does the olive produce the olive oil. And says the Medrash, so too Klau Yisrael. The Umay Sa'olam, the nations of the world, they come and they beat and they torment and they torture Klau Yisrael. And they chase them from place to place. Klai Yisrael has constantly been in Golos running from place to place. But only then, after all of these things are done to Klai Yisrael, does Klai Yisrael do tshuva? And when Klai Yisrael does tshuva, after that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu props them up. And in that way, we are very much like the olive. So Nesiva Shalom elaborates a little bit on this medrash. And he asks the following question. What really makes the Zayis unique? And, and why is it so unique and so special that we want to single that out and compare it to Klai Yisrael? What makes it unique? What makes it unique, says the Nishiva Shalom, is that a Zayis is the only fruit that aside from its regular mitzvahs, its regular characteristics, it also has a hidden and reserved koyach. That's an olive. That after the olive is crushed, and after it's beaten, what happens? Out comes a new product. A new koyach. A product and a koyach that we did not see before. And what is this koyach? It's a koyach that is now able to fuel light. You're able to light the olive oil, and a beautiful light comes out of it. And even though there are other fruit that also produce a better product after you crush it, after you do things to it, for instance, a grape, right? There are other fruit that do that. But what, the, with other fruit, they remain just that. You can do something to the fruit, but what happens is, it still retains, it, it's still a food. It's one type of food, and then you crush it, and you beat it, and you do something else, it still remains a food product. But the Zayas is different. What is produced now from beating and doing something to a Zayas is a totally, totally new thing. And what is that? That is the Kayach of light. Something totally different than the original product. And this is how Klal Yisrael says in the Siva Shalom is nimshal to a Zayis. Inside every single Jew is a great light, says in the Siva Shalom. Every person has the light in their neshama, 
And your neshama is a chelik lekami mal. Your neshama has a piece of Hashem in it, and every yid has that. And a lot of the time, though, this light and this chelik lekami mal, this chelik of a kaddish baruch Hu that's in our neshama, it's hidden and it's smothered by things of gashmius in this world. It doesn't shine out. We don't see it. There are things, the Gashmi's things, and the things that we do, they blind us from seeing that light. However, when you work, and you break your tithes, and you get through that darkness, out shines this light, and it's in the neshama of every yid. Just as in an olive, when it goes through seemingly a torturous path, but after that comes out the light. A light, a new thing. A light comes out. And of course, says the Nesiva Shalom, we're not discussing physically beating any person. That's not the way to get out the light. So I don't want anybody running and uh, physically beating somebody and say, listen, I'd like to get the light out of you. You seem a little dark today. I want to get the light out of you. That's not what we're talking about here at all. What we're talking about here is breaking a person's in a person's heart, breaking down the barriers in your heart that are blocking you from feeling and seeing this light of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And the Nesiva Sholem says that this light that emanates from the heart of every Yid is the light of the Or Hagonos that was at the beginning of the Bria. At the beginning when the world was created. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said at the beginning when the world was created, Yehi Ar, let there be light. And the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is a great light. It's a big light. But then, right away, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when things weren't working out exactly as they should have, HaKadosh Baruch Hu took that light and put that light away. La'asid Lavoi. La'asid Lavoi, when Mashiach comes, that's when we're going to feel and we're going to see that light. It's not a physical light. It is a spiritual, godly light. And this light in the times of Mashiach, this is going to be the light that lights the way for everybody in the times of Mashiach. And we spoke about this a little bit, Hanukkah time. That the light of the Menorah we discussed by Hanukkah and the Menorah is in this week's Parsha, the Menorah of the Mishkan. The light of the Menorah is also from this light. The light of the Menorah was left from this Or Hagonos, from this original light. And the light of the menorah, says the Nesiva Shalom, we see from the Torah, has to come just from this type of oil. It has to come from the Zayas. The Zayas represents what is inside every Yid, a hidden Kayach. And after, sometimes people go through a lot of things in their life. And they go through a lot of trouble. And sometimes people could go years and years with, in fighting with the Eight Sahara. But if you work on it, and you're finally able to break it, you're zoicha to have this light. The Medrash Tanchuma in Parshas Noyach says the following. It says that the Or Hagonus, this light that was put away, was put away for those that work. But work on what? For those that work on Torah Shabal Peh. People who have Amelus in Torah Shabal Peh. For those people that have Mesiris Nefesh to work on Torah. To people who refrain from sleeping at times. They toil at night in learning. And they don't get enough sleep. These people, says the Medrash Tanchum and Parshas Noach, these people are going to be zoicha to see that light. They're Mekayim the Pesach of Ha'om. Ha'olchim b'achoyshech. Ro'u or Godol. Those that close their eyes to Gashmish. Ha'olch b'achoyshech. When it comes to Gashmi, it's, they make it dark. They don't always look to light up all the luxuries and illusions of Olam Hazeh. Those people, they will be illuminated by this inner light. And then Siva Shalom says we have the same idea by Shabbos. The light that shines forth from a Yid on Shabbos is a different light. On Shabbos, the light that is, that is hidden in each person, the Shabbos Kodesh brings that out. Everybody notices, everybody sees that on Shabbos, if you concentrate a little bit, you could tell that uh, the, there's a light shining from every Yid. If you're in tune with your neshama, if you're in tune with what you feel on Shabbos, you feel this light. You know that the way you feel during the week is not the way you feel on Shabbos. 
And here's a beautiful lesson that the Nesiva Shalom wants us to learn. So we discussed that sometimes a Yid has to go through a lot and go through hard times and go through things in order to get to this light, in order to get to this unbelievable, beautiful light, to get to this level. Chazal tell us, Kosis Lamor, the Posik says, Kosis Lamor, Veloy, and we darshan, Veloy Kosis Lamenochis. And Siva Shalom says a beautiful play on words on this Chazal. Listen to this word, he says it from the Kabrina Rav, Zuchusa Yogan Aleinu, in the Torah Sa'avos, he brings it down. It says like this, the Tachlis of Kosis, why did we beat the olive? Why do we smash the olive? Why do we have to do that in order to get this light? The Tachlis of Kosis is that you should search through your soul and break yourself, and, and th- that's, that's how the light should come out. It should be Lamor. It should be Kosis Lamor Veloy Lamanachas. That a person should feel that if you're breaking yourself and you're doing chuba and you're doing things, it should be Kosis what? For the end result of Mar. Don't just beat yourself and chas v'shom become depressed, become down. Look what I've been all these years. I went from my teenage years, 20s, 30s, 40s. I, I was having trouble with the Yetzirah. No, it's never too late. Even if you finally get a hold of yourself and you a little bit hard on yourself, it's meant kosis lamar. Be hard on yourself, but for that end result, that the light comes out of it. The end result, that you should feel that light at the end. It should be a result in a positive way. Veloi kosis lamenachis. That a person should be so fatigued and so down after you harden yourself that you get depressed. That's never the way. The way for a person to go forth and grow is never to be down. Every person, there isn't a tzaddik in the world that hasn't had a hard time, that hasn't had a fight with the Eitzahara. Some people go through it for a shorter period of time. Some people for a longer period of time. But when we finally make that decision that we're going to work on ourselves and fight with the Eitzahara, it has to be with an uplifting way. Kosis Lamar, that a light should come out of it, the loy Kosis Lamanochis, that Chas V'Shom, you shouldn't get down on yourself. And this is what every person has to know. You have to know that there is a light in your Neshama. There's a light in every person's Neshama. You need to get in touch with it. You need to think about it. You need to remember what are the characteristics and why HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted the holy mitzvah of the Menorah to be lit. Dafka with Shem and Zayas. Dafka with the characteristics and the way that a Zayas is. That's what Hashem wants from us. Let's talk to be to learn the lesson from this week's Parsha.